You're listening to 88.3 The Sting. I'm Olivia McGreevy, and today I am joined by Rory. How are you? Hey, Olivia. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you so much for talking with me today and just chit-chatting and letting us get to know you. Well, thanks for having me. It's really good to see you again and talk to you again and uh, get anybody who's watching and listening. Yes, of course. And same to you. So my first question is just tell us about yourself and kind of where you got where you are today. Uh, sure. Uh, I, I, I am a, uh, an, an actor, musician, and producer. I um, live here in New York. Um, I grew up performing. Uh, it, it, I it came from a, a family full of artists. And um, I also I came up in the recording studio scene because of my dad and his history in the music world. Um, Found my voice kind of a little bit later in life, a little kind of in my um, early twenties, and I've always been obsessed with music. I've always been obsessed and and with the you know had that inner need to be a performer. Um, uh, my dad and I produced, write and produce music together for maybe the for a little over ten years now, and uh, you know what what started off as something kind of for fun and something that we were really just trying out turned into something um that we you know really buckled down and kind of took seriously and uh, uh even though <laughs> uh wouldn't necessarily recommend taking anything seriously but um uh yeah so that's that's kind of it i made my uh made my broadway debut uh in the uh, broadway company of jersey boys in 2014 went from that to the original cast of a uh, bronx tale the musical mm -hmm. and have released uh, an EP since then and various singles that's on all streaming services and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's kind of long and short of it. Yeah. One, I think it's awesome that you work with your dad. I think that is so amazing. Um, and two, how does it work for you, musical theater and music? Do you think one became, like, came before the other for you or was it just, just so happened that acting and music were two things that you just really loved and they just so happened to work together? Not one thing necessarily influenced the other, although I, I I find that because they're both such a really just orbit my world now that uh, they they kind of have a little coexistence. But I'd say in the beginning, no, not really. I just I always knew I wanted to be an actor, a performer, and uh, always have just done that. Really, just like streamlined that big time in my life and. Uh, and music was just the world I, I lived in, whether, uh, you know, whether it was just um, being obsessed with it on my own or, you know, coming up in the in the recording studio mm -hmm. environment that uh, that my dad was in. You know, I, I, I have vivid memories of, uh, you know, doing homework in Harmelodic Studios in Harlem uh, mm -hmm. when my dad was I think he was he was managing a band at the time and doing some recording. And that was uh, the legendary late uh, Ornette Coleman's. Um, recording studio in Harlem, the the, the famous uh, saxophone player and his son Donardo Coleman, the drummer, and everything. So I was just I was just always kind of immersed in that world, and um, yeah. So I, like I said, I think when I found my voice and everything, I just I, you know, and became a musician of my own. Uh, I just that just kind of came up hand in hand with uh, with my desire to to perform and be an actor. Uh, Baldwin Wallace is a very huge musical theater school, performing arts, music. Um, that's very, very, very rich in that type of culture here. Do you have any advice for students or anybody who's looking to go into performing? The dream is a very real thing. Uh, it, let it, let it, let it live inside you. Let it be the thing that truly drives you forward. But understand quickly. Um, that the road you've got to take to get there will will always change. You're not in charge of that pathway. You choose the pathway, but different ones will get presented to you. The dream doesn't necessarily happen the way you want it to. It's it's. I would not recommend to have a rigid, you know, belief or that uh, that you know how that dream is going to become realized. Mm -hmm. It's all about perspective. It's all about keeping an open mind. Don't tunnel vision yourself. That's not gonna. That's not gonna serve your dream, which again is very real. Take that. Take those moments, especially when it's challenging the most. Challenge yourself to relax. 
to sit back and to broaden your perspective, the, the horizons of your perspective and see the different choices, the different elements that you have in front of you that are gonna help you realize that dream that lives, that lives inside you. That dream has to be your engine that you've got to keep oiled and clean and charged. And, you know, uh, that, that's the thing that is, I think the most important it's perspective. It'll be cliche later on, but it's so important. It's perspective, relax, pay attention, you know, Absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. And like you said, just relaxing and just letting it, your dream and everything just kind of guide you. And, and I really believe that what is meant to be will end up working out. So I 100% agree with that. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, we, we've all, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir to you and, and everyone listening, but you know, this past year was a major year and a half was, was a major uh, reflection period on exactly that, that thing. You know, we, we had to stop doing everything that we were doing to make those dreams realized, but you know, you were forced to reach inside yourself and f exercise those creative juices that you need to exercise. Maybe reach into yourself and, and, you know, find the thing that maybe you didn't know you were going to hone in on mm -hmm. and then go full steam ahead on that. And then it, 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 it you, you realize something not, uh, new about yourself. Mm -hmm. And now that thing is going to help you realize that dream. Yes. You know, it's, it's, you know, going through a little hell to, to find your own piece of heaven. Yes. Again, I agree with that. And I feel like this past year, I was really able to focus on myself and take the time to get those creative juices flowing again and take a step back and decide what was really important to me and what direction I wanted to take. And I feel like um, it was really important to sit back and definitely look and reflect on what was so important and where to go from here, you know? And I feel like this past summer was when I really started getting back on track with everything. So that's cool. I, I, I think it takes, I think it takes also, you know, especially in, in this business, which is a very specific business to be in. You, I think, I think it takes a little bit of, a little bit of crazy. I think it takes, you have to have, you have to have a really, really, crazy belief in yourself yeah. you, you gotta have that it, without that I think you're just you're gonna fall behind and you've got to really you got to have that belief in yourself yeah. it, it, again that'll, that'll sound a little cliche but it's you have to do it yeah. you, have to, you have to have who are some of your musical inspirations uh that's a very long list uh, uh this the sake of sounding slightly pretentious I you know honestly I think the thing what inspires me about an artist is uh originality mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm really hearing an artist that is doing something or doing a sound or manipulating a sound that is that is really of their own uh which kind of seems hard hard to do as as time goes by uh it's I think it's a very special thing you know I I, I also I'm a major sucker for uh composition you know, I think I think music composition tends to get lost in in music, pop music, these days. And uh, when I hear a song that really, you know, sounds like somebody sat down to to write something, is uh, I I get inspired by that. Really awesome production style. I I I love that. I I am a studio engineer as well, and I do produce music. So um, so hearing somebody really just kind of like go for this sort of original sound and and going for something that's like whoa production behind this is just absolutely awesome it just um it jazzes me up I, I i get i get super excited and it makes me want to create more and search for that thing that maybe sets separates me from someone else whether it gets me wild success or just somebody goes oh man that's mm -hmm. i love your sound or i love the thing that you're that you're doing right now just i i i love it i love the sound of that i mean if uh you know there there are there are bands if if i'm if i'm thinking off the top of my head there are artists like um there's been, uh, the Arctic Monkeys. Mm -hmm. I like their sound a lot. They have a they have a super cool sound. Really awesome production. Awesome songs. Um, I love the the Bright Light Social Hour. I love. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Foo Fighters. I'm just a. I'm. I'm. It's honestly. It's like that's just a group of dudes that are like, screw it. We're gonna do whatever we want to do, mm -hmm. and they do. And more often than not, it sounds pretty fantastic. Uh, I love the artist Her. Okay. The, Talk about uh, an originality, but also an, an amazing mm -hmm. musician. She is, you know, where she's taking this kind of like 
R&B pop rock element with her with her uh, guitar playing and whatnot. I've I've seen live footage of her that just it 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 blows my mind how how good she is. I love performers like live pr live performance, really good original live performance too, which also lets you know that maybe their studio productions aren't so manufactured because they crush it live. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like somebody like Janelle Monet, I think, mm -hmm. you know, when it, especially in the pop realm. Oh my God, she's unstoppable. She's just absolutely amazing. So can you tell us, do you have kind of a specific writing process or what do you usually look for for inspiration for your own music? Uh, good question. Uh, I, but I think, you know, I, honestly, it's, it depends on the song. Mm -hmm. Depends on what I'm writing. There are songs where uh, like a melody or lyric comes to me first and I have to figure out what I want to do to accompany that mm -hmm. or or I'll write just like a full on instrumental and have that for years and years that I always play to. And I either have to decide to keep that for myself or okay, am I really, what am I really going to spend time and turn this into something? Like I have a, I have a song, uh, I have a song Carry On that was just like the, the story behind that song is it, it, it stemmed from a very unfortunate circumstance, but it, but the way it happened was, it was just one of those kismet moments where I wish every song could be, I could write every song the way this one came out, came about where it was, you know, something happened in my world and it, uh, like it, the, the, the song, the lyric and melody just, just sort of fell out of me. And, um, the next morning I, I get a, I get a phone call from my dad who was like, he goes, man, I don't know what it was, but last night, just this, this music, this thing, this piano, there's just like piano part, just, it just came to me and I had to write, I, I had to, I had to put it down. I don't know what it is or what's going on or anything. And it just so happened that the two just married together so perfectly. I had no idea he was working on anything. He had no idea I was working on anything. It just happened that way. I wish every song could, could kind of happen like that. I would have, like a crazy anthology at, at this point if, if they all worked out like that. So I, it really depends on the experience, it depends on the song, the, the circumstance. Um, I, I, want, I want my music to always be about something. I wanna have something to say and something significant. Um, you know, we all wish we can be profound uh, 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 every single time we, we do a piece of art. Um, but uh, yeah, as long as, as long as I'm saying something effective, uh, I, I want I want people to love the song if it's like a really cool upbeat song. I want them to feel like they can dance to it or pump their fist or bang their head to it also. But then like there's maybe there that lyric where they're just like, man, yes, that lyric, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly, I, I get it. Or, you know, that sort of thing. I just, I love it because I know I want to create, I want to, I want to make people feel, feel about my music the way I feel about the music that I love, you know? Yeah. I mean? <laughs> we have unintended consequence and rotation here. Yeah. So do you want to tell our listeners and anybody watching about that song? What did the process look like for that? What was the inspiration behind it? Uh, well, first of all, thanks to 88.3, The Sting, for playing the song, having it on rotation. It's so awesome to hear it on the radio. I, I heard the, the, the first time you played it, you gave one hell of an introduction that like totally, it like broke my heart, man. It was just so, it was so sweet and it was so kind and, uh, you're amazing and the station's awesome. Uh, I love the music that you guys play. So it's, it's, uh, it's awesome and an honor to be played in the rotation that you guys have, uh, have going on. So I appreciate everything. And that's, that's super, super cool. Uh, to answer your question. <laughs> Unintended is, it, it's about making decisions. It's about when we unfortunately make decisions based on fear mm -hmm. you know, um, and how we get caught up in feeling sorry for ourselves uh, you know, instead of paying attention to sometimes what's just right in front of us, which is the solution to what, what gets us feeling that sort of way. Um, it's, it, it's, it's realizing that a lot of the time, the things that happen, the things that happen that make us go, why, why me mm -hmm. is uh, a lot of the time, more often than not, we have ourselves to blame for that. Mm -hmm. um it's a message that says you know it's it's like imagine imagine what you would do if you took all that energy that made you that you're where you're making yourself feel all of that which is giving you the unintended consequences that it's giving you that sort of almost negative spiral mm -hmm. and taking that energy and just shifting it to change your perspective yeah I'm just saying like 
what would happen if you if you just did this? Uh, try harder, work harder, be better. But that the song that we're playing is off of your EP Full Circle. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Full Circle was so Full Circle was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so, like I said, you know, from the beginning, I I write and I produce with my dad, and the reason for that is because you know he has he was major like heavy hitter back in the goes goes just decades um uh, decades back to uh, the music industry in new york city from being a singer songwriter to being studio manager in some legendary recording studios and working with some really incredible people and being a recording artist and an engineer himself um and uh which you know and, and there there's actually a side project that we're working on right now where there's going to be a little bit of a remastering of some of his old original stuff from decades ago maybe like early to late 70s mm -hmm. um it's gonna get like pressed on vinyl there's gonna be like a huge release of it it's like the coolest thing in the world that's but that's, awesome. that's a conversation, conversation for another day i yeah. just follow follow me along to to like for release on that kind of stuff especially if you're a vinyl collector or anything like that you're not going to miss it it's so good anyway uh but a lot of the music a lot of his music i grew up with and it's very easy for me to sound biased but it's really really good music it, it's it's just so it's such good stuff and um but there's a there's a major part of it all that never really got to see much of the light of day um and having grown up with it I, and, and and loving his music so much i kind of want to find my voice and i've figured you know you know what yeah i really want to not i want to go from sticking my foot into the production world and really stepping through that door um i kind of saw this opportunity that this concept that i had to take a take a a good handful of the music that he had from way back when and totally rearranging it together mm -hmm. Re just new productions of them rearranging some of them with the original song titles and song concepts and others like unintended consequence um that are original compositions from though from that time but a completely different song than when it once was mm -hmm. and they and they are and so it the full circle uh, element is those songs getting to kind of come back around and and have an, a new life it, you know I, I always equated it to like having an amazing sports car that just sat in a garage for years mm -hmm. and all it ever wants to do is just tear up the highway and this was kind of like my way of kind of letting them opening that garage door and just like starting the engine yeah. And also kind of that full circle of this journey that we have between father and son, uh, kind of like his music, kind of me going, okay, this is, let's make this our music, kind of putting this kind of thing out. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't take our relationship for granted at all. I know I, I, uh, we have something very special and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty unique and, um, it's a major, major blessing to be able to kind of work together. doesn't mean we, doesn't mean we don't do this from time to time. I mean, everyone can relate to that i guess but it's um but it's uh it's a it's a it's a pretty special thing we've got going on so yeah that's, i think that's... that is absolutely amazing and so beautiful that you're able to do that with his music and do that with him that is amazing yeah it's pretty it's it, it feels amazing so you know again, never never taking it for granted and uh you know i always tell him you're you know you're not done you don't you don't get to be done <laughs> we, we need to we need to kind of keep this thing going because he loves it i love it so yeah that is amazing. And like you said, you said that you guys were going to do some vinyl pressing. Well, yeah. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not too much out there yet. I, I want to make sure that when everything is really put together and packaged right, that it, uh, that the, the, the idea of it all really gets, gets out there, but it's just a little side project at the moment from a band from, uh, that he had when he first came to New York in the early seventies made some really incredible music and did press some vinyl and it did get released, uh, um, very limitedly uh is that a word <laughs> back, back, in, back in those days uh, and um it really is just absolutely kick-ass music mm -hmm. uh, and uh you know we, right now there was somebody who's interested in saying hey i re i i, I reissue records and we want to do a vinyl pressing and you know all that kind of stuff. He, he we found out that his music, his band from back in the day, is in a book called The Acid Archives, wow. which is a book of underappreciated bands in their time. And he's in that book, his old band and everything. So it's just like this whole this past like couple of years have been just a total 
uh, head trip, you know, about, you know, that kind of like his past sort of like revisiting uh, him like that. So yeah, it's a, that's a, that's a plethora of information that's almost useless right now. But if you follow along, I swear to God, when everything gets released and everything, you're not going to want to miss anything like that. Your music, it is awesome. Because I know you from your musical theater side. So when sure. you sent me your music, I was like, he rocks. Oh, man. It's amazing. I That's love it so sweet. much. That's so sweet. Yeah, you know, is I I never, I didn't even grow up necessarily um, loving musical theater. That was never, mm-hmm. never uh, on my radar too much. I mean, I grew up here in New York. Uh, plays were always my thing. Television and film. Um, musical theater, I always had the respect for it. No mm-hmm. question about it. It's like, it's it's one of the hardest uh, art forms and it's just when it's really done right it's it's a it's an amazing thing but I never necessarily saw it as something that was for me I grew up I found oh man there's there is a there is an area of musical theater that I totally identify with and I and I love it and I think it's amazing and it charges me up and it's uh and it's super cool um but yeah so it's you know the music never necessarily was influenced by Mm -hmm. something like that I just I feel like now they only go hand in hand because it's the performance aspect of it. Mm-hmm. You know, when you really yeah. see an actor commit to uh, the text in a song and really perform that, not necessarily just arms wide open singing to the heavens, but really having that uh, having that intense connection, it's um, it's it's pretty priceless. And I like trying to put that into performing my music. You want to tell our listeners maybe where they can find out more about you, follow along on your journey, keep sure. up with you. Uh, it, you know, uh, follow me at, uh, at Rory Max Kaplan on, uh, on Instagram. That's kind of the only social media that I have that's really, uh, up to date. And, and I, and I post to, uh, um, on the regular it's, uh, I'm not the best when it comes to social media, but I try. And especially when things are getting released, um, I'll be doing a whole lot. Uh, there, there's, there's always, uh, a post about when something's dropping, something's coming out the next show I'll be in or, or, or what have you. So, uh, so you can always find that sort of thing. You can always, whatever you stream your music, you can search Rory Max Kaplan, find the catalog that's there. Uh, I'm releasing new music all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a lot more single releases this year and awesome. package them up at, at another time. So, yeah. Awesome. And for our listeners, listen, you're going to really want to keep an eye out on our social media because you have some very exciting things coming up. Like you said, new music, some special projects. So definitely go follow him, show him some love because there are some pretty cool things happening. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So thank you so much for talking with me today. It was so good to see you. It's so awesome to see you too. It's awesome to talk to you. And again, really awesome stuff with the, with the, uh, with the station. Keep rocking it. And uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome.